Okay, so in 6.2, we learned our like volumes using faces, basically. So we, we find some cross-sectional face and we integrate. Now, sometimes that method doesn't really work for us or it's more challenging to try and force a problem to fit that way. So for example, let's say we have this y equals 2x squared minus x cubed and we rotate it around the y axis. Now, that would mean that we would need to integrate this thing with respect to y. But that would involve then solving for x in the equation. So if we had our like um, y equals 2x squared minus x cubed, we have x's of varying powers, and that's problematic for solving for x. Um, you know, we could maybe subtract the y, set it equal to 0, and then potentially try and force some form of factoring, but essentially there isn't a simple way to solve for x here. And because of that, we would like a different method. So we use what we call the cylindrical shell method. So it's sometimes referred to the shell method. That's probably more common. I tend to think about it as the cylindrical method um, just because shell kind of gives it this like wrong impression in my opinion. So instead what we're doing is Basically, we're going back to the concept of area in, in two-dimensional space that we've already used, where we're essentially thinking about this area here as a bunch of slices of height. So this is our height right here, okay? And so <clears throat> we take infinitely many slices of it in two-dimensional space, but then to make it three-dimensional space, we take each of those slices and, and rotate them around the axes. We create a cylinder with no width, like a, with no thickness, like a, a cylinder that has this wall has zero thickness, but it does have a height and it has a circumference basically. So essentially this area, this face's area makes up the um, kind of space that we're creating. So we find an area that is height wide so like again think about it this wide here and then spread all the way around okay now the reality is that this picture kind of gives a bad impression that each one of these cylinders are the same size the reality is like this cylinder is only this tall and then this one is a little bit taller and so on and so forth so it's based off of the height of this okay so what does that mean we do well all we have to do is we have to think about this basically in terms of the volume is going to be equal to the integral from A to B of our circumference of our circle times the height. That's the area of this object we created. Essentially, we created like ribbons if we cut them somewhere um, and turn it on the side here. This right here is the height. And then this right here would be the circumference. So turning it on its side so it's more in line with the picture, then this would be the height and this is the circumference here. We create these rectangles in which we just need to find the area by taking circumference times height or you know length times width or whatever, right? That's what this is. So we are basically just looking at area differently here. So we're taking a bunch of these ribbons essentially, which we turn into cylinders. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind. What is circumference? It is 2 pi r. Um, and in general, we want to choose our radius to be in terms of either x or y, most often x, but um, it just depends on what we're rotating around. That also means that whatever our like dx here, that means our height needs to be in terms of x and our circumference needs to be terms in x. Okay, so let's think about this. So if we're going to find the volume of this object, now, first of all, what is this object that's being created? Well, it's basically like a bunt cake. So if we think about like a bunt cake, right, like it's kind of this, but maybe without the, without the ridges, but essentially that shape is being created here. We are taking it and rotating it around and we're trying to find this volume. So again, there's no easy way to solve for x. And since we're integrating with respect to um, y, if we were using the disk method, we'd be integrating with respect to y, we'd have to solve for x, then that's not really feasible. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our um, shell method or cylinder method. 
Now, again, the way I recognize when I'm probably going to use the, the cylindrical method or the shell method is when I have like X's or Y's of varying power. Um, and I'm trying to solve for those X's or Y's, then I know, nah, I'm probably not going to be worth the effort. So we are going to take the integral here. Now we are integrating, even though we are going like from here to here, we are thinking in terms of slicing this this way. So we are slicing it along the x axis. So that tells me we're going to be a dx. So we need to find the circumference of this um, of each cylinder. Now, if we think about it here, the circumference of this cylinder circumference is 2 pi r. Now, for us, our radius of our circle is just going to be the x value, how far out we're talking. So our circumference then is going to be 2 pi x. So that's going to be 2 pi x times now our height our height is how tall it goes from zero up to this function line and our function is y equals 2x squared minus x cubed so our our height here is y and so our y in terms of x would just be 2x squared minus x cubed so we're going to integrate this now again along the x-axis so that's from zero until two so again with our like um, disk method or just our uh, whatever it's called um, cross-sectional faces, we we usually do it along what we rotated it around. But with our cylindrical shell method, we're doing it where we're slicing it. So how are we slicing this thing? Are we slicing it along the x-axis or the y-axis? Okay. I mean, realistically speaking, you could say that the disk method or whatever cross-sectional method is also sliced along the axis that you are integrating with respect to. So that's no different. It's just that we often recognize that we slice along the rotation axis, axis in the disk methods, but we're not doing that here. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so let's go ahead and integrate this. First, I'm going to distribute this. Oops. Um, so we have 2 pi x times 2x squared is going to be 4 pi x cubed minus 2 pi x to the fourth that we are integrating from 0 to 2 dx. Okay, now we are going to integrate this thing. This is going to be 4 pi x to the fourth over 4 minus 2 pi x to the fifth over 5 from 2 to 0. So this is going to be 2 to the 4th pi minus 2 to the 5th. Um, and there's another one, so 2 to the 6th pi over 5. So let's go ahead and take a look at Desmos. We don't need the bunt cake anymore. Okay. So 2 to the 4th minus 2 to the 6th over 5 is going to be 16 over 5 pi. So we get 16 over 5 pi. And that is our volume that we found. OK, now let's do another one. So use the method of cylindrical shells to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating y equals 4x minus x squared about x equals negative 2. So here. I know we're using cylindrical shells because I have an x and an x squared. So if I'm rotating around the x equals negative 2 here, then I would be integrating with respect to y in the disk method. And that means solving for x, and that's not really feasible here. So I'm going to switch over to cylindrical shells. So y equals 4x minus x squared. OK, so we are rotating this thing around this um, axis here. Now, oftentimes we would probably define this as like the volume in terms of like splitting this along the x-axis as well. But since this isn't saying that, maybe because I typed it in wrong when I wrote it or who cares, right? Whatever. Essentially what we're doing is we're trying to find this whole thing rotated around. So we're not split at the x-axis as we often see. So that means we're going to be down here at y equals 
negative 12 it looks like yeah so essentially what we're looking at is like this volume rotated around okay so <clears throat> that means or this area i should say rotated around so let's go ahead and slice uh snip this so that we can take a look at what we're doing okay down. All right, so we are taking some slices here. I am not drawing those very straight, but whatever. Obviously, we're slicing this thing along the x axis. So that tells me that I'm going to be integrating with respect to x. So we're going to integrate from negative 2 until 6. Okay, so we're integrating this thing. Now, what we want to do is we want to think about the circumference of each value here. Okay, so let's think, oops, let's think um, in terms of a single line here, right here. Okay, the radius, <clears throat> this would be the radius. So, what would our radius be? Well, in that case, this looks like, all right, maybe like if we had our x, our x is something, whatever our x is. Um, in this case, like a radius of right here, this is negative 1, okay? So that would imply that our radius is 1 here. So maybe we need to do something like x uh, minus 2. So that would be negative 1 minus 2. That's not going to work for us. We're just trying to think of a way to write our radius, okay, using this thing. So maybe our radius is like, um, well, let's think about one of the easier ones here. So when, it's, when x is 1, okay, so when x equals 1, our radius is um, 2, 3, okay. So x is 1, radius is 3. Now let's try and find another value. Since I couldn't think of something, so like when x is negative 1, um, then our radius here is going to be um, 1. Okay. And when x is, let's say, 2, then our radius is going to be 4. Okay. So we have some values here. So if we think about this thing, um, we have essentially some ordered pairs. I'll start at the lowest, negative 1, 1. Then we have, um, let's say 0. That's 2. 1 would be 3. And 2 would be 4. Okay. So hopefully we can start to see some kind of pattern here emerging. So at the smallest one, when x is negative 2, our radius is zero, right? So um, maybe we need like x minus negative two, okay? Something like this. So maybe x plus two. Let's see. x plus two would work here. Um, so negative one plus two, okay? Here, we're okay. Here we're okay. Here we're okay. All right. So it looks like it's going to be x plus 2, which is what my like natural inclination would have been, but it just felt wrong. So I just wanted to make sure by looking at some kind of pattern of values to make sure that it's going to check out for multiple. So our radius here is x plus 2. So that means that our circumference is 2 pi r, but our r, r is our radius is x plus 2. <clears throat> now, Let's talk about our height now. Okay, so our height, as you see here, is going to be essentially this value, y. But it's, it's not really that, because this would actually be our y, and it's going to be some negative, okay? So if you think about this, our y value at this point is some value, and this is actually the height. So what we need to do is this, this value here, if we think about the overall height here, this is 12, 
this distance here is 12, okay? And if we take off our y, then we'll get our height. So let's think about this really quick. So in this case, 12 minus y would be our height, okay, on this one. But let's think about over here. So here, our height is kind of our, um, our y value. The problem is we have like a, a, a negative y, so we have to, I'll have to think about that. Let's just create some, let's actually just find values. How about that? Rather than just like approximating, let's actually find values like we did elsewhere just to see if we can get something. So when our y here, this is our y right here at negative uh, one, it looks like our y here is negative five. So our y is negative five and our height then would be um, seven, it looks like. So negative 12 to five, that would be seven. So that's our negative, negative five, seven. That would be our one of our first points. Let's take a look at this one here. When our height is, um, well, let's see. When our y here is negative 12, our height is zero, okay? When our, um, let's take a look at here. When our y is zero, our height is going to be 12. When our height here, or excuse me, our y, that's gonna be one, two, three, three. Then our height is gonna be three plus 12, which would be 15. Okay, so it looks like the relationship between our y to our height. So if we take our y and add 12 to it, we get our height. Okay, so y plus 12 is our height. So let's double check. Negative 5 plus 12 is 7. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. 0 plus 12 is 12. 3 plus 12 is 15. So that looks like it's checking out. So again, I like to just think about it. So when we have these, sometimes it's just a matter of creating some ordered pairs and looking at like what, you know, what is the, the pattern that I see emerging here? So our height here then is going to be um, y plus 12. But we want our y in terms of x's. We don't want height in terms of y's. We want x's. So what is our y? Well, our y is 4x minus x squared. So that is to say height is 4x minus x squared plus 12. Okay? So we now have our circumference and our height. So we can integrate this from negative 2 to 6 dx. We have circumference 2 pi times x plus 2 times our height, which is going to be 4x minus x squared plus 12. Ran out of room there. Let's try and fix this up a little bit. Plus 12 dx. Okay, so we need to do some distribution here. So I'm just going to pull that 2 pi out. I usually don't when I'm just doing some basic integration, but in this case, I do want to do that. Okay, so x times 4x is going to be 4x squared minus x cubed plus 12x um, plus 8x minus 2x squared um, and then plus 24. Okay, so I'm going to recombine them and redistribute this thing. This is dx still. So let's take a look at the x squareds here. That's 4x squared minus x, 2x squared. That's going to be a 2 pi times the integral from negative 2 to 6 of 2x squared. x cubed now, we just have one of them, minus x cubed plus 20x plus 24 dx. So if we want, since we're going to have to do it anyway, I'm just going to distribute this 2 pi back in. So that's going to be 4 pi x squared minus um, 2 pi x cubed plus 40 pi x plus 20, uh, 48 pi. And we're taking this from negative 2 to 6 dx. Okay, so this would be 4 pi x cubed minus 2 pi x to the fourth over 4, and I forgot my over 3. 
um, plus 40 pi x squared over 2 plus 48 pi x from 6 to negative 2. Okay, now just to save myself a lot of hassle, I'm going to go ahead and use Desmos to do that computation. So we'll do the 6 one first. So we have 4 thirds times uh, 6 to the third minus 2 fourths, which is just 1 half. So that's um, 6 to the fourth over 2 plus this is going to be 20 times 6 to the second power plus 48 times 6. So that's 648. So we have 648 minus, all right, now let's do it for negative 2. We have um, negative 2. Ooh, I just don't, I don't really trust that. Oh, well, we'll do it anyway. I'm always wary with negatives on radicals. I'm just being really care or negatives with exponents. I'm going to be very careful. In fact, because this, I know it's going to be a positive, I'm just going to treat it like a positive. Same thing here. I'll just call it a positive. And then this 6 here. All right. So we end up with this value. Um, anyway, so we have minus negative 1. 4 over 3. So that means that we have 648 plus our 104 over 3. And that gives us some value here. We have an approximation, obviously, um, right here, 682. But for us, this 2048 over 3 would be acceptable. Anyway, so sometimes we run into kind of more complicated aspects. But at the end of the day, it's just a matter of trying to set up your circumference and your height in terms of x's or y's, depending on your situation. Um, if we are rotating about the y-axis or something similar to the y-axis, then we're generally doing it along the x-axis integration. If we were rotating around the x, then we'd do it for y, generally. But again, it's just a matter of how we slice it. So that is our cylindrical shell method. Again, sometimes called the shell, sometimes called cylinders. But that is how we find volumes um, when our cross-sectional method doesn't really work for us or isn't easy to deal with. We switch to this. So it's just really there to make our lives better. So we don't want to force it on something that we can easily do the disk method on. But if we find that it's easier to do the cylindrical shell method, then we're going to go with that. Anyway, thanks for watching.